If you were to have asked me just one year ago that I would be playing against DSVG in my gaming career in this in MCOC, I probably would not have believed you because I never thought I would be playing Alliance War at such a high tier like this. Like we're in tier one now. Uh, we got there like maybe four wars ago, uh, three wars ago, and it's crazy. Like. DSVG, I have a friend, a couple friends in that alliance, and I know for sure of like three fellow YouTubers in that alliance, and it's crazy that I'm actually playing against them, which again, if you asked me that a year ago, I, I genuinely would not have believed you. I didn't think my, uh, my account, my gameplay would ever make it to this level, but here we are. I, I somehow, I'm somehow here, and uh, you're gonna see why you know, maybe I'm not the best, not nearly the best tier one Alliance War player out there. Um, and that sometimes I do wonder to myself if I should be playing at this level. Uh, but, you know, that was... Alright, we start on path 7, and that was an Atuma that we just wrecked with Kitty Pride. Pretty easy fight, did that one before I think in a previous war. But um, next up against the, is the uh, next up is Misakure versus Dragon Man, and I think I've done this fight like three times now. It's really easy because of decay. Um, you just have the withers to completely negate his power gain, and then this node is where if you knock Dragon Man down, you will place an armor rake on him, and if he is armor broken, he will degen the opponent. So it's pretty great that Misakure can do a full rotation without ever having to knock the opponent down because we can simply just throw that SP2 in this block, do so much damage, and then rebuild to another one, and he's, his rotation just works perfectly. Obviously, Masakure kind of has two rotations, where one would be you do the SP2 into the block, all that stuff, and then the other one you would be want to re refresh the incinerates with your SP1 and keep knocking them down with that. Sometimes that's the better option because of the slow from Decay, in some matches, I've definitely used that SP1 rotation. I think I do the SP1 rotation later in this war, actually. But most of the time, and in Battlegrounds especially, you're going to be doing the rotation where you SP2 in the block. So, yeah, that's a good example of using that one there, and a good example of why never knocking, knocking the opponent down is something that's really good for a lot of node combinations, like that Dragon Man right there. So, next up, we have Idoom on... What is this? This is node 19, I think. And this one is with never back down and indomitable. So never back down, if I dash back twice within the span of 1.2 seconds, he will start to regen. But um, A, it's not like a regen that's gonna be crazy enough to make me really pay for triggering it once or twice. And B, Tigra does so much damage that wouldn't even matter. And we also have despair from the, from the ruptures to completely ignore it even if it was triggered. So that's pretty great. Um, Alright, so next up we have Scorpion, and I was actually kind of worried about this fight going into it. This is Buffet Over Time, uh, Arc Overload, Reinvigorate Unblockable, all that fun stuff, and we're taking it with Masakre. And my game plan here, I talked this over with a good friend of mine who's been helping me plan out my fights this season, um, and we both came to the conclusion that the best way to take this would be to play the SP1 Spam Incinerate Rotation. Because, like I said, with Decay, you are going to be placing a slow when you knock them down and you have enough debuffs, which Masakure will almost always have when we're keeping those incinerates like we are. And, um, I don't really know why I decided to block the first few hits of that SP1, but it's not that big a deal. Um, we knock him down with a heavy attack too, which will also place the slow. And now we're just going to go for another SP1. We only, we only refresh four incinerates when we throw it. And now we don't refresh any because I forgot about the fact that we got intercepted there somehow. It was weird intercept, but it's okay because we are going to go for another SP1. We have Despair basically negating his healing, and then the incinerates and bleeds are about to kill him. Uh, we trigger the the uh, buffet node there, and it really just does nothing. He goes down, so that was uh, not a fight I really had to be worried about. Misakure absolutely cleaned up, so went pretty well, and happy with that one. Okay, so, this is Node 44 Korg. Node 44 has Stun Immunity, Hazard Shift, Incinerate, and Poison, and that's it. It's just a large Korg with Hazard Shift, Incinerate, and Poison, and Stun Immunity. 
And my game plan here was get an initial light intercept, and then we just continue to do that till we build prowess till we're phased. And I'm just getting completely bullied, because the first light intercept, I was really early on it, or I mean really late on it. The second one, I was even later on it. And you can see here, I'm just trying to get my light intercepts. And now I'm in the corner, and okay, we have, we have an intercept window now. And now I'm like, I need an intercept there to get my prowess to phase, and now he's unstoppable and I'm in the corner and I'm dead. That is probably the most embarrassing war fight I've ever put out, because we died with him at 96% health. And you can see I'm just staring at this end screen and how badly that went. And so, there are arguments where maybe I should have went for an inter medium intercept instead and just taken the rock, field, the rock damage, the uh, thorns damage, which I don't really know. That might have been smarter. It probably would have been smarter. I don't know. This fight just went so badly and I'm really embarrassed by it, but um, I don't know. I just played it so bad and I feel like my rotation could work if I just played better. There goes my indestructible boost because of another bad light intercept. Like, for some reason, I'm just getting so early on these. Or so late. <laughs> so late on them. What am I saying? There's no way I'm early. So late on these light intercepts. And they're just making me pay for it so much. And uh, we have the poisoned on us. But when we're phased, we don't take damage. So it's not that big a deal that they're on us. He's also just constantly throwing special attacks and regular attacks into my phase, keeping my prowess low which is really annoying, so now we're going for the SP3. Um, this is going to place an incinerate that will ramp up our temperature a lot, even though we are getting some temperature from triggering our incinerate immunity, it's not as much as I'd like, and so we're just going for, trying to go for an intercept, and it's just, it ain't working out very much. I think I'm just gonna go for a relic here. I'm waiting for the poison to go away for a little bit because I don't have prowess, and then we got a striker intercept there, which definitely helped a lot. And we're going for a risky intercept. If you threw that special attack, I might have gotten clipped by it. I also might have um, might have been able to avoid it. It's just, again, a risky intercept, so. And then, okay, there was an early intercept. Like, I don't understand what my intercepts were doing this fight. Like, I just either was really off or, I mean, I guess I, I had to be really off. There's really no other way that they were going that badly. And there I... There I didn't even phase, so I could have gotten clipped there, but um, we go for the SP2, we get one crit out of all five hits with all our extra crit rate, and yeah, I know Korg has crit resist, but like, one? Also, I had my unblockable there, so I could have hit into his block, and then, and I'm dead, again, bad intercept, I mean, that's just the theme of that fight, just bad intercept all the way, the entire time. I, I just don't know how I messed this fight up so much, because I in a previous war video this season, I, I won this fight. So there goes so many potions, and I'm just like, I'm just in awe of how badly I'm playing this fight. It's really embarrassing. There's my opening light intercept. If I got that, like, the first two times, we'd be chilling. It wouldn't be that big a deal. All I need is my three prowess, then I can phase, then I'm completely confident. It's just, I... Getting those three prowess was so hard because I just screwed up the intercepts so many times. It is what it is. I mean, I, I can't blame anything but myself. It, it's really bad, but um, at least you can see me do pretty well in these last fights. Actually, first off, we have to talk about this. I go to intercept, he auto blocks me, and then I can't recover before. He I was going to like go for another light attack into his block, and then he light attacks me first. I don't know what the heck happened there, but luckily that's the only mistake I'm going to make in this fight. Um, I, I, again, I, I don't know what happened. He just auto-blocked my medium, and then I couldn't do my next light attack in the combo before he light attacks me. Oh, well, never mind, another mistake. I got parried by the auto-block, but um... Uh, somehow we triggered Tigra's 10% chance to miss a projectile special attack, which really saved us a lot of health there. So that's nice. Uh, I don't I don't know how that happened, but that was very lucky. I don't even know why that's an ability Tigra has. It's just like she has a 10% chance to miss special attack projectiles. It's so random. But it saved me there, so I'll take it. Um, I, I still would have soloed that fight even if I took the full SP1. But, you know... Uh, definitely was 
uh, a bit better for my confidence that I had more health to work with for the rest of the fight. Anyway, we got a WAGS pre-fight placed for me against this node 48 bishop. This node has the nodes where if you if he gets a prowess, he's going to get an impact charge, and impact charges increase block penetration. And so I'm baiting this SP1 so I can phase through it. Actually, I think I'm going to... No, okay, I'm going to phase through the whole thing. Sometimes I'm actually going to block the SP1, which you will see is a bit of a mistake because of the amount of block damage I'm going to take. And uh, right here, I can't even phase it, and I take a bunch of block damage and then lose one hit on my indestructible boost because I couldn't dex out of it for some reason. But um, what we want to do in this fight is bait his SP1s initially because of the fact that we'll be placing incinerates on ourselves, which will just give us our temperature. And then once we get ready to do a kill shot, we want to push him to SP2 and then phase right through it because um, then we get a bunch of prowess and a bunch of extra prowess for SP2. We throw it, we get one crit, two crit, we get four crits and then it doesn't kill him but then our striker is unblockable so we can just immediately throw it and then he's dead right after that so we finished the war strong at least it's just that korg fight was awful gave two deaths from it and it didn't even matter like we played against dsvg they gave only two two deaths so like <laughs> what what are you gonna do what are you gonna do our alliance didn't even play our like our best this war i certainly didn't but um we gave up 14 deaths which is actually it's probably average for us maybe a little bit above average but like you know when you play against an ally that only dies twice what are you gonna do just accept accept the loss so it's unfortunate it's our first loss of the season actually we're eight and one now which is crazy that we've actually won eight in a row before that but anyway that is my war nine um, quite an embarrassing one, but, you know, I'm looking to recover for the last three wars of the season, and I'm excited to get those out. So, thank you so much for watching, have a good one.